Hello everyone, my name is Raymond and I am a game developer and the creator of The Street King. Welcome to my fourth devlog for Left Turn Legend, a wacky parody of American Oval Circuit Racing. It's been quite a while since my last video, but I've managed to get some more work done now. If you saw the video thumbnail, the first thing you'll have noticed is that I've created a logo for the game now. It's a bit of a parody of the real life NASCAR logo, with a cheeky modification to the G in Legend so it looks like an oval circuit. To describe how I made the logo though, we need to start with what is perhaps its most important feature, the font. I wanted the text to somewhat resemble that of the NASCAR logo, so I started off by trying to find some free fonts online. Unfortunately, none of the fonts I found were free for commercial use, which meant that I couldn't use them. Also, I realized that even though I wanted a similar font style, I didn't want it to be identical. I needed something a bit blockier to match the low-poly art style that I've been going with. So, I decided that the best solution would be to create my own font from scratch. While the logo only needed a handful of letters, I realized that it would be nice to have an entire font so that I could use it in-game as well. So I got to work creating every letter and symbol I'd need. I'd never done anything like this before, so I started by doing a bit of research into how fonts are made. What I found was that it wasn't quite as simple as just making an image file for every letter. Instead, the letters use a special image format known as vector graphics. Let's take this screenshot from the game. If you zoom in enough, you'll start to notice that the picture is made up of pixels. If we try to do the same thing with the letters in the font, you'll start to see the problem. It works well for small letters, but once we make the text too big, it starts looking ugly and pixelated. While we could just use higher and higher resolution images, doing so would require bigger and bigger files, so this isn't a good solution. Enter Vector Graphics. Instead of defining the image by a set of pixels, we use equations for how the lines should look. Since we don't have to constrain ourselves to a grid of pixels anymore, the image will dynamically use as much or as little detail as needed. That way, it will always look perfectly sharp. Fortunately, I don't have to figure out the equations myself. Instead, I downloaded a free program called Inkscape and got to work creating all of the letters and symbols with vector graphics. It was at this point where I realized that I was very lucky for sticking to a blocky font. It made it much easier to get letters to match each other in style, and I could use straight lines for everything without having to worry about making complicated curves look right. To further simplify things, though, I decided not to make lowercase letters. The font looks best in all caps anyways. Once I made all 26 letters, the digits 0 through 9, and all of the symbols I thought I'd ever need as separate image files, it was time to combine them all. Using a program called FontForge, I imported each character, fixed spacing and other issues, and then exported the final font. Now that the font was done, it was time to make the logo. Since the logo will appear in a lot of places, sometimes larger than others, I realized that it would be best if it too used vector graphics. I started by just having the text in my new font, with the style set to italics to give it some character. I then added in these slanted bars as a nod to the NASCAR logo. From here, I started playing around a ton with different styles and trying to figure out how to make it look better. I flipped some of the letters and gave a few of them arrow graphics. Then, I did some tests with merging the L's in Left and Legend, but that didn't end up going so well, so I scrapped the idea. I continued making changes to the logo, adding and removing various components, until I finally ended up with what I have now. I decided that only having the G be reversed looked less messy than the previous iterations with multiple stylized letters, and I ended up offsetting the words a bit so that the slants of the L's line up. While I'm probably going to keep making changes to the logo in the future, the current logo is my favorite out of all 16 iterations so far. I'm open to any suggestions on how to improve it though, so please let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts about it. I've started work on the track's infield, which means that there is now a pit road. Since Leftington Speedway is such a short track at barely over a quarter mile long, I had to split the pits between the front and back straights, similarly to Martinsville Speedway in real life. I haven't really done too much with the art in the infield and pits yet, so I want to instead focus on the gameplay additions that came as a result. If you're skilled enough, you can drive into pit lane yourself, although this is very difficult because you don't have any control over how fast you're going. 
What's more interesting, however, is how the other racers interact with the pits. Other cars can spawn in the pits, and they'll merge back onto the track without a care in the world. This can lead to huge crashes and chaos. To create the pit lane AI, all I had to do was add a few tweaks to the existing racer AI. If you watched my first video, you'll remember that the track is an ellipse, and that the AI and other parts of the game use various equations. To get the AI to drive on the inside or outside lane of the track, I can just decrease or increase the size of the ellipse that they follow. If we make the ellipse very small, then they'll drive in the pits. However, once they reach the end of the pits, they'll end up crashing into the wall. This looks pretty funny, but it wasn't the effect that I wanted. To fix this, I created a trigger at the end of the pits that would tell the AI to change their ellipse to a larger one. So as soon as they reach the end of the road, they'll join the rest of the racers on the track again. In my previous devlogs, the only way to earn points was to drive for as long as possible. That isn't too exciting, so I finally added some new ways to score points, complete with text displays to show what you've earned. You can earn points for trading paint with other racers, and get even more if you slam their cars around. You can even take it a step further and earn a huge bonus if you completely take down another racer. But this is pretty hard to do without also wrecking yourself. Additionally, you will also earn bonuses for completing laps, overtaking opponents, pulling into pit lane, and collecting power-ups. Your lap bonus will increase with each lap, so more laps means more rewards. I won't get too far into the specifics, but the lap counter and the overtake tracker both make use of the ellipse equations that I introduced in my first video. The basic idea is that by keeping track of the current angle progress of the player and the opponents, we can determine who's in front and what lap the player is currently on. I got a few comments in my earlier videos asking about why this was used instead of a checkpoint system. And the reason is that since we are using the angle instead of just keeping track of checkpoints, it can be much more precise and exactly follow the elliptical track. This concludes my fourth devlog for Left Turn Legend. I'd like to thank my king patrons, this face thing, TLM10's Gaming, and GrandAm67 for supporting me and my games. If you want to help out, please be sure to check out the link to my Patreon in the video description. Also, if you like this sort of content, please consider liking the video and subscribing. As always, leave a comment if you have any suggestions, feedback, or questions, and stay tuned for future updates on the game and the twist in the driving. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.